Welcome back to the Basics of Neuroscience course. In this lecture, you will become familiarized with the different cell types that are found in the brain and the function of each. Now, first and foremost, the neurons are the functional units of the brain. Because of their unique electrophysical properties, they are capable of transmitting signals and information throughout the nervous system, or what we call electric impulses. This is a diagram of a basic neuron and all of its structural features. The cell body, which contains the nucleus, which has the DNA, has many protrusions, which are called dendrites. Now these dendrites are where the neuron will receive impulses. So it will receive a message from another neuron at its dendrite. So the dendrites are thought of as the input into the neuron. Now the axon that extends from the cell body is the part um, that the neuron will send its impulses through. So the axon is thought to be the output of the neuron. Now, this uh, yellow substance that is surrounding the axon is myelin. Myelin is made up of fatty substances and it has a very important function in uh, actually speeding up nerve conduction. And we will go through this uh, in the next lecture on how this happens. Now the gap between individual myelin sheets is called the node of Ranvier. We have a few of these across the axon, as you can see, and also uh, you will understand the function of this structure in the next lecture, which is on um, neurotransmission and uh, communication in the brain. Now, the electric impulses will actually be passing from one node to the next, rather than just um, passing through uh, the axon, which is um, one of the things you will see in the next lecture, this is why it can speed the myelin, uh, can speed up the neurotransmission. Now, um, the axon branches at the end will divide into uh, multiple um, synaptic boutons, so we call these the axon terminals. So each one of these can contact a, a, a neuron. Now, other than uh, neurons, we also have a huge class of cells which we refer to as glia. So these are all uh, the non-neuronal cell types that are found in the nervous system. Now, traditionally, they were thought to only be responsible to just for just providing some support for the neurons. Uh, but in recent years, a lot of research has started to show that they actually have critical roles that go ju beyond just support uh, of neurons. However, one important, um, one important feature that is different between neurons and, and glia are that glia are not able to transmit electrical impulses. So this is something that is specific and unique to neurons. In addition, it was previously thought that in the brain, uh, glia outnumbered neurons by up to 50 to 1, but recent, recent evidence is also showing much smaller ratios, so actually some scientists are suggesting a ratio of 1 to 1 between neurons and glia. Now there's a review here that I've put at the bottom, you can um, read that review if you're interested in this, um, but it's, it, a lot more research is needed in this, uh, in this uh, field. Now, uh, the first type of glia are astrocytes. So astrocytes are cells that uh, play a role in uh, neuronal metabolism, and they also play a big role in regulating neurotransmission. We will also see this in the next lecture. Um, the second class of glia is the microglia. So microglia are thought to be the immune cells uh, of the brain. They become activated in response to certain stimuli, and they can uh, then clear up any dead cells or any uh, unused uh, material that is no longer needed by uh, neurons. Uh, the third type of, of glial cell is the oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system or their counterparts in the peripheral nervous system, which are called Schwann cells. Now, these are the cells that actually um, will be producing the myelin, which is the, um, the fatty substance that we saw is wrapped that is wrapped around the neuronal axon so they are responsible for wrapping the axon with myelin sheets uh, both in the central and the peripheral nervous system and finally ependymal cells are also found in um, the brain and these cells are responsible for producing and regulating cerebrospinal fluid which circulates within the ventricles as we saw in the last lecture on neuroanatomy 
Now here on the left, there's just an image that shows you how all of these different cells um, interact with each other and um, how they're related. So we see the neurons are really being um, contacted by a lot of these cells, especially the astrocytes. Uh, and we'll see that again in the next uh, in the next lecture, this very intricate connection between astrocytes and um, neuronal synapses. Now on the right, is a really interesting drawing. It's a sketch that was made by one of the fathers of neuroscience, Ramoni Cajal, and he actually sketched all the cells that he saw in histological sections from human brains. And uh, this drawing also shows all the different cell types and how they are interconnected. So we can see that there are really so many connections between the cells and uh, we can see a huge diversity in the cell shapes. So there are some neurons here, there are some glia, astrocytes, all of that. Now to delve further into how these cell types are organized, um, we can look at the mammalian cortex. So the cortex is this uh, outer layer of the brain that is shown in the darker brown color here on the, in the diagram on the left. The cortex is organized into six layers from outside to inside. Now the outermost part is called the molecular layer and it consists mainly of connections or processes from different cells and they run across this layer, they're either dendrites or axons. Layer two is called the external granular layer and it consists of some small neurons and also some inhibitory neurons that we will cover later. Layer three is the external pyramidal layer and it contains cells that are called pyramidal neurons because of their shape. Layer four is the internal granular layer and it contains some small neurons in addition to some pyramidal cells. Layer 5 is the internal pyramidal layer and it contains giant pyramidal cells that have long range axons that will project to distant regions. Finally, layer 6 is called the multiform layer because it contains a variety of cell types. Now this layering is really important for input and output uh, and also the organization of circuits in order to produce actual meaningful functions in the brain. Now from this overview of cortical organization, you may begin to notice how many different cell types we have and how diverse they are. So diversity is especially seen in neurons. Uh, neurons in one area may look completely different than those in another area or even in another layer in the same area. So here are a few examples. By shape, we can distinguish some different types of neurons. Uh, unipolar neurons, for example, have only one process extending from their cell body, which is an axon. Bipolar neurons have two processes extending from the cell body, in this case an axon and dendrites. Now we already saw pyramidal neurons uh, and they feature dendrites both apically and bas basally, so near the cell body and then also at the top, in addition to a large axon. Purkinje cells um, are found in a structure called the cerebellum, which also we will see in uh, lectures, uh, in upcoming lectures. Uh, these cells have very, very extensive dendrite branching because they receive a lot of inputs. So you can always tell a Purkinje cell from a normal uh, neuron because of the way it looks. Um, and then uh, this is basically uh, an image that is showing um, the different uh, types of interneurons. So interneurons are basically intermediate uh, cells that just pass on a message. Um, they are also very diverse. They can be classified either based on shape or whether they are excitatory or, or inhibitory. And we will, um, you will understand this concept uh, in the next lecture on neurotransmission. But also, it's, uh, it's interesting to know how diverse the interneurons are, and this is a huge uh, field of research. So there's also um, a review that I've put here um, at the bottom that you can read if you're interested in knowing more about these, um, about neuronal diversity and also these interneurons.